When I first got down here, we formed an advisory panel to prioritize what organic grain farmers most needed to know. Um, and they really had us focus on, on corn and soybeans for the first, first four or five years because that's where the money was being made. Uh, and they had fairly simple rotations. Now, simple rotations in organic don't mix very well. We want to do everything we can to lengthen that rotation out there for pest management. Um, at the same time, though, we've gotten the industry up to a size to where now there's enough acreage out there on the land that we're attractive targets for other organic niche products. So we have folks signing contracts now for organic canola production, signing contracts for organic sunflower production. Uh, most of the growers have added wheat into the rotation now as well. Organic wheat went from being borderline profitable to in some years it'll be the most profitable part of the rotation. So we're getting a much more um, uh, uh, diverse rotation out there. We also have in terms of organic acreage that grains are being grown with, we've gotten to a size now where we have a few thousand acres of organic sweet potatoes grown in North Carolina. And so grain crops make a nice rotation for that sweet potato acreage. We've got four 45 organic tobacco growers and they're growing, many of them are in the size where it now makes sense, or at the scale at which it makes sense to grow grains in rotation with those. So um, this, this project here is fairly young. We've only been at this a couple of years in response to, uh, we got a couple of buyers now who are contracting for this. Uh, canola I like a lot. It's a real natural fit into the North Carolina grain rotation. It fits right exactly where wheat does. So we plant this crop. We like to plant a little earlier than wheat, but we plant it after corn. And so, you know, we're going to pull our corn out in August, September. We've got plenty of a window to get this in. We'd like to see canola planted by mid-October. It doesn't overwinter if you plant it too late. Um, I like it a lot in the spring because it comes in about a week ahead of wheat. So for staging out, if you're going to be growing wheat and canola, we can hit one and then the other, uh, which is very nice. And so it gets harvested, and then we can plant soybeans directly after it. So I've had it when the buyers first started coming in, they were like, well, you know, we're used to we're operating in Canada, upper Northwest. What do your yields look like compared to ours? And I was like, well, I don't know yet. We can probably try to project. We're probably a little off of your yields, probably not far off of your yields. But more importantly, it's cheaper here because we're producing an off season. We're going to be able to, uh, to get a crop in after this. Whereas when you're doing it up in that territory, that takes your entire field out for the summer. So we no, have no double cropping potential where it's traditionally grown. But anybody want to guess why they're, why organic canola is moving down here as opposed to those areas? 10, 15 years ago, if you were going to find organic canola, it would all come out of Canada, Minnesota, those kinds of areas. And there's almost no organic canola production up there now. GMO drift, GMO? Yeah, GMO. This is a terrible crop for that contamination issue. So it's something organic industry has to struggle with a lot. Some crops like soybeans. Not a big problem. We don't have wind pollination to worry about in soybeans. It's much easier to segregate. You got a wind pollinated crop like that, you got Roundup Ready canola all around you. It's very hard to keep this crop clean, particularly for what are we going to do with this canola? It's going to go into a food grade product. All the food grade processors now are testing for GMO contamination at very strict levels. And so it was just too hard to, to keep it clean enough to not get rejected up there. Down here, we have very little canola production, but it actually happens to grow very well. It just hasn't been grown here historically because the big crushers who dealt in canola, it all got started in Canada and just, you know, has never been historically a big area to produce it down here. So we like our little niche. We're, uh, we're, we're hoping we can hold on to it. We're actually now attracting to, we've got quite a few thousand acres of rapeseed being grown in the state conventionally. Rapeseed, it's the same story. They don't want contamination with canola. They need the rapeseed to stay at a very high level of erucic acid content to make it marketable. So they don't want canola growing around them. So we can specialize in these specialty niche oil seeds right now.